Welcome to a lesson on instant runoff voting, abbreviated IRV. In this lesson, we'll define instant runoff voting and also apply instant runoff voting to determine the winner of an election. Instant runoff voting, also called plurality with elimination, is a modification of the plurality method that attempts to address the issue of insincere voting. And we discussed this in the previous lesson. In IRV, voting is done with preference ballots and a preference schedule is generated. The choice with the least first place votes is then eliminated from the election and any votes for that candidate are redistributed to the voters next choice. This continues until a choice has a majority or over 50% of the votes. So let's take a look at a more detailed example. Here we have a preference schedule. We want to determine the winner using instant runoff voting or IRV. Before we do this though, Notice how if we find the sum of this row here, we can determine there are a total of 35 votes and therefore for a majority, a candidate must have at least 18 votes. Also notice using the basic plurality method, the winner would be candidate B. Notice B has five plus five plus six or 16 first choice votes, giving it more than any other candidate where candidate A has zero first place votes, candidate C has eight, candidate D has nine, and candidate E has two. Now to find the winner using the instant runoff method, we would eliminate candidate A since candidate A has zero first choice votes. So we can either cross off A, as I am here, or just delete A from the table, which would look like this. Notice in this case, by eliminating candidate A, we don't assign any first choice votes to any other candidates. So now we move along to the second step. We eliminate candidate E that has two first place votes. So we eliminate candidate E, or delete E from the table. The table would look like this. Notice how by eliminating candidate E, these two votes are now assigned to candidate D. So A has zero, B has 16, C still has eight, but now D has 11 votes, and now E has zero. Now for the next step, notice candidate C has the least votes, so now we'll eliminate candidate C. Or just delete C. Notice by doing this, these eight votes now go to candidate D. So A still has zero, B still has 16, C now has zero, but notice how D has 18, which now gives D a majority of the votes. 18 divided by 35 is approximately 51.4%, and therefore D wins using the instant runoff method. Now let's discuss what can go wrong when using the instant runoff method. Instant runoff voting can violate the Condorcet criterion as we saw in our previous lesson when we were discussing insincere voting. Let's go ahead and revisit this example just to emphasize what can go wrong. Here was the initial election results. Using the basic plurality method, the winner was candidate A. Then doing the one-to-one -one comparison, we noticed that candidate C, the independent candidate, would win. But then if we applied the instant runoff method, notice how candidate C has the least first place votes so if we eliminate candidate C using the instant runoff method, we can see that the Democrat wins with a majority of 57.9% of the votes. So this is an example of where the instant runoff method can violate the Condorcet criterion. However, it is important to emphasize that the instant runoff method does address insincere voting. Those voters that were tempted to vote for the Democrat, candidate B, can now vote for their preferred candidate, candidate C, the independent, knowing that if their candidate is eliminated, their votes would go to their second choice or candidate B. I hope you found this helpful.